Now I want to talk about deliverance, how to do it. Um, many people have a tendency to do deliverance only by spiritual deliverance. That means pray, drive out demons, and then all oh, demons are out, and then oh, you are delivered. Um, I've, from my experience, I've found that Many people, it's very hard to have total deliverance because of their life. So, I see the importance not just of spiritual deliverance, but also see the importance of the deliverance of the life and the way of thinking, the way of life. Uh, when I have you know, the experience of driving out demons from people and they seem to be better, but then they are unwilling to put down the anger, frustration, or hurt from their family members. And it's very hard to have complete deliverance. That I've seen people keep coming back, keep coming back again. And I've seen people who are delivered very easily. So all this, the importance is in handling the life. How to handle the problems in the life. Many people have difficult difficulties in their life, you know, family members, financial problem, emotional problem, the way of thinking of people. So it's inside them and also relating to the, to the world. And those things um, would make it hard for the demons to go away. I have, you know, I, I began to be aware of this when I attended a meeting. And this meeting emphasized on deliverance. I went there one time and I noticed one woman who had really heavy deliverance, who cried a lot in a very heavy way. And then, two years or so later, and I noticed that the woman also helped in the ministry. Two years later, I came back. I saw the same woman cry in a very sad way, very loudly. And I said, there must be something wrong that because the way they cry, I mean, if a person is touched by the Holy Spirit, they cry, oh, oh, God, you're so good. Oh, it's different, but, ah, wow, that's yeah, totally, yeah, that's, yeah. that's very different. Yes, yes. And I noticed that women cry like that. And I, I start to be aware that there must be something wrong in their life. Yes. But I notice, it's a sad thing, I notice many people do deliverance, the main emphasis is always on spiritual. They always say, what spirit you have, what spirit you have, and then in Jesus' name, cast out the demons. And there is not much counseling to help the person to handle the problem. And the number one killer that affect people are people relationship. Husband and wife relationship make them unhappy. Hurt experiences in the past that make them unhappy and unwilling to forgive people. So. That, uh, then we we'll do counseling and now this counseling part is a big part but I'm you know just summarize it saying that someone might have a person very hard to deal with if this represents someone very hard to deal with in the family if we wait for the person to change before I have freedom we might never come to that day that person might always be angry frustrated so we have to, first we understand the person's hurt feelings, but at the same time we have to let, ask him the question, do you think this person will change? The probably will say, I haven't seen him change at all. He has had the problem for a long time, he's always like that. So he accept, then if he's always like that, what can you do? You're going to change him, what can you do? You can change yourself. What can we do then? We have to learn to turn off what they say, and say this is, these are words, you know, are from the sinful nature. These are words from Satan. These are the fiery darts from Satan to attack us. So we say, even when he yells at me, so what? It will disappear in the air in one split second. What he says, so I just can forget it. But some people say that's unfair. He yells at me, I have to get angry. But when they get angry, then they will, won't have deliverance. So we need to say this is his problem. If I am at fault, I will apologize. I will change. If I'm not at fault, I still say, respond to him in a positive and nice way. Thank you for telling me. I'll pay attention to that. 
Thank you. I will, I will try my best. Give me time to be humble and, and be very nice to the person and the relationship may change. And at the same time, the person needs to have a close relationship with God, enjoy God every day. Because even if we handle people's problems, if they cannot have joy from the Lord, then they don't have full deliverance. They won't have joy. I notice in this country, many people don't have joy. Maybe because of hardship, poverty. So that's something we need to help the people, have counseling and or, or teaching on how to have joy of the Lord. And, and then when the people can have the strength from the Lord, the joy from the Lord, and handle people's problems, and handle the way of thinking, and the way of having uh, emotions. Because many people think negatively. When they see any problem, they say, there's no way out, it's impossible. But the Bible says, with God, everything is possible. And the Bible is saying, even when people have problems, it doesn't matter. We can pray for them, we can, we can have compassion on them. The key is to have compassion on people who hurt other people. This person hurt us because he has been hurt by people many times. So he's really a miserable person. So I understand that. Then I have, have compassion on the person and I would <clears throat> care about the person and pray for the person and forgive. That way I won't be affected because another motivation is my life is so precious, I don't want to be affected by people. I don't want to have negative thinking. And so when we handle this people problem, emotional problem, the way of thinking, and uh, this person knows that you know that he's loved by God. His life is very precious, very important. That he can do great things to bless other people. His life is precious, so it should not be ruined by other people. And then when he have this mentality and hunger for God, when when they pray, you can say, "Oh God, you're so good. Hallelujah. You're so good. Hallelujah. Wonderful. God is wonderful. I want to." have a close relationship with you and love you. That way, it's very easy to have demons driven out. Mm -hmm. Another point is, some people's spirit are not open. Yes. Then it's hard to also yes. drive out demons. Yes. For instance, there's one woman that was a new convert in your church. That from the, uh, the first day I prayed for her, she was rolling on the yeah. floor. Yeah. But then, next day she was not. No, no response. And then, uh, last night, she was rolling again. So, when she was open, then the evil spirit manifest. Mm -hmm. But when she's not open, nothing. Mm -hmm. Because her spirit is not open. Mm -hmm. So that also need teaching and training to pray for the person. So that the person is open to the Lord and appreciate God and the spirit is open. So for you too, you need to learn to have your open spirit. And all, also learn to take care of suppressed feelings. A lot of times people have problems experiencing the Holy Spirit because the feelings are suppressed that ah, I cannot laugh I'm under pressure ah, when you're like that it's very hard that you are used to holding back everything so we need to learn to laugh yes. and rejoice mm. and be thankful yes. hallelujah praise the Lord so if you have a place you know in the church you can do that cry out loudly hallelujah praise the Lord I can enjoy God hallelujah and laugh. In this way, gradually, your yes. spirit will be very open. And then you can experience the Holy Spirit very easily. Yes. And then your, the anointing, if you keep praying a lot, and handle your life, and love God, and serve God, and pray for people, the anointing will continue to increase. So when we pray for deliverance or healing, it's the same thing. Healing too. Why people are not healed? It's also from hurt feelings in the past. Interpersonal problems emotional problem, life problem, that they cannot handle problems, problems in life. And so they have this problem and then these people would have physical pain. And the body cannot function well. So when people ha have this kind of problem, the body cannot function well, the spirit cannot function well. And then the evil spirit is hard to get out and the sickness is hard to get out. So we need to learn to uh, guide these people counsel them and not just teaching but because when people they are living a certain way you just tell them what to do they won't change we have to guide them to say the way you're living now does it work 
the way you're living now, how is it affecting you? Do you want to change and how can you change? How can you look at life a different way to guide them? Counseling is guidance. Mm -hmm. Teaching alone, people reject. They don't like teaching. And they cannot open. If they, if they are like that, like think of that woman that I just talked about. Yeah. You keep telling her, trust in God, worship God, love God, do not be hurt by people. <laughs> she won't change. She knows it, but she cannot do it. Yeah. Or maybe she's not convinced. And some people say, can you forgive your husband or your wife? He might say yes, but then he goes home and then he has problems. So all this has to take guidance. Does it work so far? Does it hurt your life? That's counseling. Because then when you guide a person to think, and when he thinks through that and he finds a difficulty, and then if he's willing to change, if, even if he change 1% a day, it's already great change. So when people change a little bit, he says, I begin to thank God. Hallelujah, you're changing. Hallelujah. I begin to pray for my husband. Hallelujah, you're changing. We have to uh, congratulate them for any change. And then, now what I was talking about was the deliverance of the soul and the life. And then the different deliverance of the spirit comes from worshiping God, loving God, and experience the Holy Spirit in a strong way. And then in that situation, and then you can cast out the demons. And one way I find it helpful is to look into the eye yes. of a person, yes. and a person look into my, yes. the center of my eye, yes. the apple of my eye, and to look at the right eye, because if he looks at both eyes, then he will not be concentrated. Look at the right eye, and then you look at his right eyes, and then you cast out demons. But for some people, it doesn't work. Because when they, you look at the eyes, they feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You ask them, how do you feel? Which way is better? And then he says, uh, it's better to close the eyes than you close the eyes. Now for some people, you cast out a demon, no response. What do you do? You just keep praising God. With Hallelujah, God is good. And tell him to laugh. Hallelujah, God is good. Because in God's presence, he will, God will drive out demons. So driving out demons doesn't have to be driving out demons all the time. It can be just enjoying God. And then once in a while you say, in Jesus' name, the demons go away. So it doesn't have to be continual driving out the demons. It can be just loving God and tell Him to go home and love God all the time and enjoy God. Have the prayer of grace. Always saying, God is loving me. My life is precious. God is a wonderful plan in my life. Those are prayer of grace. Declaring the grace of God to Himself. God is loving me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That way His heart is, you know, open to God and then God can walk in His life. And then, and then, um, now, how do you see that there are evil spirits? There are a few ways that, uh, that you know that this person has evil spirit. The, the strongest manifestation of the evil spirit are people who cannot follow you in a prayer. When you say, say with me, dear Lord Jesus, he cannot say. It. That's the most serious. And then the other one says, they cannot control the body. Totally out of control. Either, you know, uh, rolling on the ground, or I have this experience. She cast out demons. You just, and then she told me, I can hear you, but I cannot respond. So the devil was ticking over the body. Ticking over the body can come in the form of he cannot say Jesus or pray, or he cannot concentrate, follow you. He cannot say, in Jesus' name, the demons go away. He cannot say it. He, and he can, cannot even uh, respond. He just, it's, it's, he feel, it's, it's like he falls into unconsciousness. But he's aware. He hears my voice. He heard my voice. And then, and then, and, and the person said, uh, it was actually a woman. I have a man like that too. Actually, I have experience of both. A woman said, um, I want to respond, but I could not respond. I was like in a glass house. I cannot get out of the glass house. It, like I was caged in. I could not do anything. But, and I found this very helpful in casting out demons. Jesus appeared to the disciples and he blew 
at them and then say receive the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can be transferred by blowing the Holy Spirit can be transferred by blowing and evil spirit came from the Holy Spirit also the Holy Spirit created angels and angels fell and became demons so in some ways they are similar demons would destroy people's life they cause people to be angry cause people to commit suicide but demons also can be transmit, transmitted by blowing so sometimes some people in cults they would blow at people and then the evil spirit can be transferred to the person so I would tell the person think of Jesus whenever they feel pressure, tension, uncomfortable relax and believe very important relax believe that God is in control God has victory we have all the authority in heaven and on earth that we have the authority to trample on demons and overcome all the, the power of the enemies and nothing can harm us and have faith and then believe that God can drive out demons and blow out and I tell people in heaven God can conquer demons in one split second but why is it so hard to drive out demons because these people don't obey God in the heart they are disobedient they have negative thinking and negative feelings therefore the evil spirit hold on to the sins and that's why the demons, demons don't, don't come away right away so if they have faith and they cooperate and they blow it out and then the demons will I noticed that some people ah, tension when I drove out demons like that and then I said relax and pull out and then suddenly relax and the demons was out and then we pray again and then some manifestation and this time the manifestation is much weaker and then I tell them relax blow out again become better and then keep doing this and then, and then they will become better now but for some people in a very worse situation they could not even cooperate then I tell them, if you cannot cooperate, just take deep breaths. Because when you take deep breath, you also exhale out deeply. And think of the demons have to come, come out. So have faith in the head. They, because they cannot respond with words. So believe demons have to go out and, and take deep breaths and blow it out. And then gradually, and in the presence of God, sometimes I alternate between these methods relax and blow out in faith and also uh, praising God laughing in Jesus believing that Jesus is blessing us so we can rejoice in the Lord rejoice in the Lord also to cast out demons and and I alternate between these methods and enjoy God and then the demons will go away more and more and if the person is willing to obey God then there will be complete deliverance so it's very important that the whole life is clear so for you too because deliverance involves deliverance of evil spirit and also deliverance of emotions and suppression and many people have this suppression in them how can you have deliverance from that each one of us probably still need it we still have pressure and that pressure will affect us the, the uh, suppression still affect us that we need to do every day believe God is real God is good and every day praise God hallelujah praise the Lord and then come in the strong presence of God and then in Jesus name the demons have to go away and then blow it up <sighs> hallelujah this is one way the other way is you have to do all this together in your daily life suddenly you think about some people who have hurt you suddenly you can think about some people who have made your life miserable or made up think of some past hurts what can you do that's the time when we can have healing prayer the one kind of prayer is healing prayer how do you do that when you think about one person that has hurt you before and then that's God's revealing to you you need to take care of that and then you think about the person and have compassion on that person knowing that that person has been hurt many times therefore he will hurt you therefore he's more miserable than you are 
So you have compassion and you bless the person, pray for the person, and then forgive, and then say, what he does to me doesn't matter because I've got, I have all the blessings, all these are in the past, so I can let go. When you let go, then your heart is more and more free. Or suppression. In your childhood, your parents or your teachers told you not to cry, not to laugh, and you suppress yourself. Or you yourself, you suppress yourself, and then you have pressure underneath. Or sometimes you have pressure, I have to perform, I have to do better and better, that you have this pressure inside you. Let me tell you, I had this fear for years. Because from negative words of people, and also from pressure of ministry. And I keep telling myself, I, in Jesus' name I declare. I declare what? I said, Jesus is happy with me. I'm trusting in God, I'm following God. I'm obeying Him, I'm, I'm serving God. So God is happy with me. I don't have to worry about consequence, uh, the result of my ministry. I'm, ha you know, God is happy with the result. Yes. I don't have to worry about that. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can. I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry. I don't have to have suppression. And I declare this day after day. And also, when I wake up, the first thing I do, I rejoice in the Lord. God loves me. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! <laughs> and rejoice in the Lord. So every day I rejoice in the Lord, and every day I declare I don't have to have pressure, I don't have to be sad, I don't have to have any negative thinking or feeling, and then gradually my heart is more and more free. And also when I praise and worship, oh, totally free, relax, look at me, oh, hallelujah, <laughs> totally relax, mm -hmm. the whole person, yes. and that way, Gradually, you'll be more and more relaxed. And you think of reasons why you're not relaxed. Maybe you worry about finance or anything. But God has a plan. God has a plan. God, one day when I go to heaven, you won't apologize to me and say, Oh, sorry, I, help, I, I forgot to help you financially. I help you in every area, but I forgot to help you financially. I really, sorry, sorry. God did not have to apologize. Yes. That God would say, I have helped you. Now, even though God's help comes in different way, sometimes it comes in a way to help you to trust in Him more. Like for my luggage and my plane problem, it doesn't, it was like to get solved right away. Yeah. God wants me to learn to trust in Him and mm -hmm. call on to Him. Amen. I kept trusting in God. That's a way of God doing deliverance for us mm -hmm. so that we don't worry, so that we keep trusting in God. That's one way God works in our life. So God doesn't instantly give you all the money you need. God take his time, but he knows you won't starve to death. <laughs> you have your provision. Yes. And so you say, okay, it doesn't matter. Now it's not solved. Problem. No problem. It will be solved as time goes on. When it comes to the right time, it will be solved. God helps me. I don't have to worry. And each day you do this, your heart will be more and more light. And then when you pray for people, people can experience the joy of the Lord. Many people I pray for, instantly. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit can flow through so freely, they instantly experience joy. I, sometimes I had a whole group of people rejoicing in the Lord. And it can happen to you too, when you have this more and more deliverance, freedom. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> every day, freedom. So we all need that too. When you, the more you do it, the more relaxed you are, the more joyful you are, and then the more you appreciate God. God wants to teach us to appreciate Him. He's so wonderful. He can heal our whole person, heal our soul, heal our spirit, heal our own life so that you can be free and rejoicing and smiling. God wants us want to restore the whole person. But many people, even when they die, they're not totally delivered. Even when they die, they have a lot of sadness. They, have, they don't have the joy of the Lord. So I hope you have this goal. I want to live a joyful life. I want to live a free life. I want to have total deliverance for my life so that I can help more people deliver.